You've missed that, guys. You've missed that. Be honest, write in the comments if you've missed it. But we're not here to talk about Red Bull, and it's not the sponsor of the video, and I wish it was. But we're here to talk about website animations, and I'm gonna show you how can you improve your user experience just by adding this animation, which I actually think it is one of the most if not the most underrated animation uh, in web design. We are going to see how to create it in After Effects uh, with all the motion keyframes, etc., using all these principles. And if you don't know anything about After Effects, uh, go check out all the other videos that I've done on After Effects. Let's start right away, guys. So for the sake of this tutorial, I've redesigned the hero section of the Kia website, which I think it turned out pretty well. And if you want to know all the thoughts behind every decision that I made to achieve that result, go watch my Instagram that I've published a really interesting video. To recreate the effect, the first thing that we need to do is to jump, of course, in After Effects, go in the toolbar and select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle into your composition. Hold on, friends, don't rush it because before we start animating the rectangles uh, we just need to point out two things two really important things and the first one being that if you're developing the animation on the y-axis so by changing the height of the rectangles you don't have to care about the width of the rectangles they just need to cover up the full width of the screen and the second thing is that whether you want to develop your animation on the full width or height of your screen it's important to take the full width and full height of your composition and divide it by the numbers of rectangles that you want to have in your animations. Getting practical, right now our composition has a height of 1080 and let's say that we are going to have uh, seven rectangles in our animation. We need to take the full height of the composition, so 1080, and divide it by seven, which is going to be the number of rectangles that we're going to have. And in that way, we're going to have the perfect height for each of our rectangles. So opening the calculators, because I am not good at math, we need to set the height of each rectangle to 154. We can truncate out the other numbers, we don't need them. So 154 for the height of each rectangle. To set the size, just expand the layer, go on contents, rectangle, rectangle path one. And as you can see here, we have the size. Click on the chain because we don't want to keep the aspect ratio that we have right now. And let's type in the 154 that we have previously calculated. Now make sure to perfectly align the rectangle to the bottom of the page and we have done. At this point what we want to do is we want to select the rectangle layer and as you can see in my case a small scope appears in the middle of the screen and the composition. In your composition it might be different, don't worry it's completely okay, but what we want to do is we go in the toolbar and select the anchor point tool or by pressing Y on your keyboard and we move this scope at the bottom of the rectangle. In that way, we move the transform origin of the rectangle from a random position to the bottom of the rectangle. Now that everything is set up, let's start animating the height. Now with the layer selected, we press S on our keyboard, which is going to show us the scale property of our element. And we also want to unlink the aspect, the two sizes and the two scales of our rectangle because we don't want to keep the same aspect ratio throughout the animation. Now let's move into the timeline and to set the start and ending point of our animation, we just need to create two keyframes and it's extremely simple because as you can see beside the scale property, there is a stopwatch. If we click it, we create the first keyframe for our animation which is going to be our starting point. And let's move the playhead at the time that we want to end our animation. So let's say that I want to have an animation that is going to last for one and a half second. And let's click this button to create another keyframe, which is going to be our ending point for the animation. And it is at that time that we need to change the height of the rectangle just by dropping down the Y scale of the rectangle. To add more spice and character to add the animation, let's select both keyframes, press F9 on your keyboard to add easing, and go on the graph editor, which is this little icon, and change the easing curve for both the keyframes. Something like that should work, so right now, as you can see, we have our animation for the first rectangle. The most useful tip that I can give you for this animation is to actually create the animation for one single rectangle and then duplicate the rectangle with the animation. Because if you create multiple rectangles, let's say, and then you create the animation for each rectangle, it's just gonna take you so long and it's a waste of time. So instead, create one rectangle with the animation and then duplicate the rectangle with the animation. 
Thank me later. So now that we have the animation in place for our first rectangle, select the layer in the layers panel, command D on your keyboard to duplicate the layers, and in this case, as I said, I want to have seven rectangles, so I'm gonna duplicate the layer six times and distribute the rectangles to cover up the full screen. Now we see nothing but a white screen, but let's play the animation and see the magic happens, guys, because I love this animation. It creates, as you can see, a lot of motion, and it creates this intriguing factor that allows the user to discover the website as the animation plays. So I absolutely love it, and if we want to push it even further, as you can see, the stripes on the image has a certain angle, so we can match the angle of the stripes with our animation. So just select all the layers, right click and pre-compose, so in that way we are going to create another composition just with these rectangles. Zoom out a little bit and we need to scale up the composition, so in that way we are going to cover up the entire composition even if we are going to change the rotation of our rectangles. With the composition selected, go in the toolbars and select the rotation tool or just press W on your keyboard and let's start rotate our composition with our rectangles. Adjust the scale to cover the entire screen and again it's time to play the animation and to see the magic happens again. <laughs> I can't stress it enough, but this is one of my favorite website animations. As you can see, with just one little change, one small tweak, we've added a lot to the composition, a lot of movements, a lot of details. And by the way, friends, just by learning this single animation, you can create a bunch of other effects. The first thing that I can think about is you can play the animation in reverse to hide an image instead of showing it, and then you can place the same animation to show another image. So friends, you saw how to create effects and how can you use it in different scenarios and now it is your time to play with it and to have fun with it. Think of other ways of applying what you've learned in this video, how to create keyframes, how to change the size of an element, how to add easing into your animation and play with it, have fun with it and create different animations. So have fun and if you found this video somehow helpful, smash the like button. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, thank you for these 10 minutes together and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below and tell me what you've learned about this video, new principles, or if you want to learn something new or something different after effects. And I'll see you in the next video with the last sip of Red Bull.